You're watching the Jiffy Loot Rivalry Series. Florida State won the toss and will receive as the Gators, who've already doubled their win total from a year ago, look to get their ninth win and secure a spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Evan McPherson kicking it off. This will be a touchback. And DeAndre Francois will bring the team out from the 25-yard line. Francois in high school was coached by former Seminole great Chris Winky at IMG Academy two years ago. Francois was the rookie of the year in the ACC, but remember week one against Alabama a year ago, a season-ending knee injury. This season, he has led several comeback wins, three fourth-quarter game-winning touchdown passes. He probably gets hit, though, more than any other quarterback in the Power Five. The offensive line has been brutal for the Seminoles this year. That's a big reason why they're five and six on the year. They give Francois time to throw here. He's got a rope, but it's through the hands of the receiver. A flag is down, though. They went to, to Marion Terry with a game-winning 74-yard touchdown against BC in the fourth quarter last week. Passing affairs. Offense, number 15. Half the distance to the goal. Florida State, the second most penalized team in college football. You see the push off on Henderson by Terry. Not a lot, but enough to draw flat. Yeah, and Florida State offensively coming out trying to be aggressive. Terry is their deep threat. But you can see with the first pass of the game, this arm strength of DeAndre Francois, one of the best true throwers in all of college football. So from the 13-yard line, they'll give it to Cam Akers. Bottled up after a gain of one by Adam Schuler, a grad transfer from West Virginia. And Francois has such a repeatable release. It just nice and over the top. Very nice spin. But what stands out probably as much as anything when evaluating him is just how tough he is, man. I mean, he takes hit after hit after hit, hangs in there in a very congested pocket. And continues to try to deliver the ball accurately. I've been impressed with his growth this year. There's second and 21, a penalty marker down. Akers is down as well as Ja'Kai Polite, who's had a terrific year, an all-SEC caliber season from the edge for Florida, made the stick. ACC officials today, Gary Patterson, is our referee. Move the formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Third down. Willie Taggart in his first year here at Florida State. One year at Oregon. Prior to that, four years in the state at South Florida. He is from Bradenton. Played college football for Jack Harbaugh, Jim's dad at Western Kentucky. Third down and 23, and the Seminoles just play it safe here. They run it. And Florida does well again. The offensive line taking down Akers. Schuler is there again for the Gators to force a punt. Greg, what, what kills you about that drive right there isn't just not moving the ball, but what the penalties do to your field position. Look where the returner for Florida and Freddie Swain is sitting right now in the middle of the field. And near the 43-yard line. It's an average return will get you cross midfield. Logan Tyler is the Florida State punter. Freddie Swain, who has a punt return for a touchdown, is back. Contact with the punter. No flag. It works out okay for Florida State. We're saying the punter was outside the tackle box, therefore. It's not roughing the punter. And with the rule to protect punters, it only applies when you are inside the tackle box. Now, with a rugby-style kicker, you give up the freedom and you give up the cloak of protection as you move outside that tackle box. Now, it's tough sometimes to tell when that tackle box starts because you're not in a true traditional offensive alignment. but. Right there, I think it was a good call. I don't know, man. If he was outside the tackle box, it was by an inch. I'm just surprised they didn't throw it. It wasn't clear that he was outside the tackle box. Good D up front on Scarlett. Florida State able to get off blocks and make a play. DeMarcus Christmas playing his final game here at Doak Campbell, the senior on the stop. 
Felipe Franks, the quarterback for the Gators, kind of an up and down season, but has played his best football the last five quarters against South Carolina, really came alive, started to be effective on the ground. Franks going to take off here, has running room, and knocked down at the 40-yard line. Pick up of eight. They'll put the Gators in third down and three. 20 touchdown passes this year compared to just nine last year. Some of that is Dan Mullen's offense. A lot of it is Dan Mullen's offense. One of the best quarterback coaches you'll find in developing raw talent into stars. Pick third down and three here for Florida State. And the pass high, incomplete, intended for Siante Lewis. So the Gators go three and out. If the first six snaps of offense are any indicator, it appears as though these defenses have come to play. And, and a big reason why Florida is on the verge of going to the New Year's Six, and the only reason why Florida State has a chance to get to the postseason is because of those defenses on both sides. Proud groups that make it very difficult to beat you, not only through the air, but on the ground as well. Tommy Townsend, punter for Florida. And DJ Matthews, who has a punt return for a touchdown, is back. And yeah, this is an excellent kick. You hear the Gator fans downed inside the five. Early first quarter of the Sunshine Showdown. After the Seminoles went seven and six last year, Jimbo Fisher moved on to AM. Before he took over at Western Kentucky, they were 0 and 12, and he got that program headed in the right direction. Before his arrival at South Florida, they were 3 and 9, then they went 11 and 2 in 2016. Two years ago, Oregon won just four games, so he won three more last year at Eugene than his predecessor. But this year, the same number of losses as last year's team after Florida State lost five or nine games in five years. They've lost 12 the last two years. Trying to avoid a 13th. Here's Murray on first down. And a great play by true freshman Trey Dean. Out in space, only a gain of a couple. There are a lot of people, guys, early in the year that were saying, you know what, maybe it'll just be one year for Willie Taggart at Florida State, but not by his own choosing. Yeah, and it's going to take time. I mean, the guys that are in this offense were not built, were not recruited to run an offense that's this, this style. Francois doesn't get much. So it's going to take some time. And you've seen some strides made in the last month of the season. They've maintained the, being competitive. And you've seen some growth. What's frustrating is some of the unorganized things that you see when you're watching them. Substitution issues, guys late getting off the ball, lack of effort when a game gets out of hand. There's been a few things that have rubbed me the wrong way. But look, this is a long-term play. And Willie Taggart, everywhere he's been, has gotten it turned around, you would imagine. The same will be happening here in Florida State. Francois in trouble, hit by Schuler, and then Polite cleans him up. Zaniga was back there first to force Francois to move up in the pocket, and then the teammates were there for the Gators to bring him down for a sack. Yeah, they're going to have to do a better job handling these defensive ends. That's the strength of Florida's team. When you see Zuniga, I mean, just go right around Williams on the right-hand side, not even much of a move by Zuniga. Just a subtle hesitation, and boom, right around the loop. You have to give your quarterback more time. Line drive punt, fielded on the 45 by Swain. And pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So excellent starting field position for Florida and Felipe Franks. They were 6-1 and one to start the season when Franks won the job over Kyle Trask in camp. But in the next two games, he was held to a total of 189 passing yards, and the Gators lost both of those games. But recently, he's been outstanding. Seven touchdowns responsible for no turnovers in the last couple games. Let a 17-point come-from-behind win against South Carolina two weeks ago in Gainesville. And he's a work in progress. You, you lose sight sometimes because you see freshmen doing miraculous things. He's only a sophomore. He's going to be a much better player here in a couple years. Franks to throw on first down. And the catch is made by Lewis. A gain of about three on the play. No, Greg, he talked about the two defenses coming to play today. And I think the strength when you look at the two fronts for these teams 
is that they are not going to allow either offense to run the football on them. These quarterbacks better be ready to throw it and try and create some explosive plays. Second and seven for Franks and the Gators. Play action. And Franks hits Tony, and it's going to be close to a first down. A couple weeks ago, guys, Kyle Trask, who Franks beat out in camp, he may have won the job going into South Carolina, but he hurt his foot and was out for the season. And then, you know, Frank scored a couple times and was shushing his own crowd because obviously <laughs> he heard some of the boos early in the game when they were down. Yeah, he's an emotional player and you know, he needs to grow from a maturity standpoint. But man, he's bounced back from some difficult performances this year. And like we've been talking about, has really been playing good football of late. 20th career start. He's been benched three times. Running up the right side is little Michael P. Ryan pushed back after a gain of about four. As the Gators are inside the 25 yard line, P. Ryan and Jordan Scarlett have split carries for most of the year, and P. Ryan coming in has only 14 more yards than his backfield mate Scarlett. Yeah, that's probably their best offensive position group. Wide receivers have been up and down. The offensive line has really had their struggles. One group that's been rock solid from start to finish on the season has been those running backs. Play fake here, Franks with time on second down. Everybody covered, Franks leaving the pocket. And he'll tuck it and run and scoot out of play. Close to the first down, he appears to have it at the 15-yard line. Man, I thought Felipe Franks had a chance. You're going to see a little post-corner route right here. And he's open. And Felipe Franks is looking in that direction. I mean, that's open when you're playing against Florida State. you got to cut that loose. That's a big play left on the board in the red zone by Felipe Franks. A good job of making something out of nothing, though, with his legs. This will be a run. P. Ryan up the middle. Down to the 11-yard line. Leonard Warner, the middle linebacker, is there on the hit. A penalty marker is down, though, in the backfield. Florida State's already been penalized once. Purple foul. Face mask. Number five. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, that's the kind of thing that the Knowles have been doing this year. Dontavius Jackson called for a face mask. You make a good play on first down, but. I mean, you can see it clearly. Jackson on the end of the line of scrimmage, not even involved in the play, but taking his right hand and putting it up into the face mask and not letting go. That's the disorganization and you know, undisciplined play you've been talking about, though, with this Florida State team this year. It shows up over and over and over again. At what point is that going to get ironed out? I mean, it's the 12th game of the season. Can't be making mistakes like that. First and goal on the six for the Gators. Piron trying to find a hole. Dragged down at the two-yard line. That was a good run. He hit a defender at his ankles, and he still picked up three or four. Dan Mullen, who is 4-0 in this rivalry as an assistant coach, back when the Gators winning national championships, Irvin Meyer, the head coach here. Sorry about the cotton candy. Here's second down and goal, and P. Ryan will not get in. Good job at the line of scrimmage by the front for Florida State. It'll be third down and goal. This front is so good. You think you're just going to run right into the teeth of this defense. Good luck. With Demarcus Christmas and Marvin Wilson, Brian Burns, who can play off the ball in this part of the field, is a handful as well, number 99. Even though it's not senior day for Burns, it could be his final game here. He's an excellent player, could go to the NFL. He's trying to come up big here on third down and go at the two. It reminds me a lot of Arden Key from LSU a year ago, who has had a decent rookie year in the NFL. Very long, physical player. will throw Franks being chased and throws it away Brian Burns was there for the Knowles fourth and goal we'll see if Dan Mullen keeps the offense out there or if he brings out the field goal unit for a short kick and he's got so much faith in his defense that would be the only reason why he'd think about going here and Felipe Franks is actually running to the sideline or walking 
This surprises me, Greg. I mean, it is cranked up. It is loud down here in this end zone. And Florida has struggled to run the football versus this front on this drive. Well, keep an eye on Kadarius Tony in the slot. They might work an isolation route with their quickest wide receiver. They throw it on third down. It's a quarterback run. No way! Franks continues to go breaking tackles, but he won't get in. Corey Durden was there first. The goals take over on downs. Not a terrible play call, but Tyler Jordan, the left guard, number 64, just completely misses Durden as Felipe Franks tries to stretch it to the left tackle. It's a great defensive play by Durden on fourth and goal, but poor execution along the front by the Gators' offensive line. FSU takes over on its two-yard line with Francois handing it off. Getting out of the end zone is Patrick and pushes the pile out to the six-yard line. Jacques Patrick, 6'3", 234. That's why he's in there on this series, to make sure that they get some breathing room to Francois. Second and six. Walt Bell calls the plays for Florida State. Willie Taggart gave up those play calling duties about a month ago. Another run. Patrick nowhere to go. Bochon Joseph has him wrapped up. He gets tackled in the end zone. The forward progress will be all the way back out at the five yard line. Still a loss on the play, but only a one yard loss instead of five. Yeah, you see where forward progress has stopped. It's right around there. He gets driven all the way back. I think the Gators thought for a half second they had a safety, but nowhere near it, obviously, as they're out around the five. I'll tell you what, Florida State has really invested in this real estate inside the 10-yard line for this entire quarter. Well, Florida State, if they start using their tempo, they might catch Florida in a missed substitution. Florida's been late getting on a couple times. Got to get a first down, though, to go tempo as that pass is behind the intended receiver, Murray. But a flag is thrown here. Trey Dean can't believe it. Pass on the third. Defense. Number 21. Stop foul. Automatic. First down. I think it's a good call. You see Trey Dean with that left arm. It was draped on Murray as they tried to throw the slant. It was actually a bad throw by Francois, way behind. I think that's what gave him the call, too. If that ball's thrown out in front, that might not be called. Well, it's pretty obvious, though, and a good one by the official on a pretty critical third down. Florida State has been to a bowl game 36 consecutive years. They've had a winning record in 41 straight years. Both of those are in jeopardy today. A huge play here, though, on first down on the run. Patrick close to a first down at the 19-yard line. They're 126th in rushing in the country, and now the tempo after they get the first down. Back to Patrick. Up the middle again. A gain of seven to the 26. Yeah, this hyper speed is so challenging to defend. You just see how quickly Florida State gets aligned. Francois already clapping his hands, asking for the football. Here comes pressure off the edge. The blitz picked up. Francois close to the first down. Brought down by Kyrie Campbell. And this tempo, too, it, it really limits what defensive coordinator Todd Grantham can call. I mean, he loves being aggressive. He loves pressure, blitz packages, exotics. But this tempo, it's hard to call those plays. He brought the blitz on second down. He did have a DB off the edge there for that third down, Sean Davis. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 59, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And Brady Scott tackle. Called for a false start. And it's such a huge play. I mean, this is the one thing that you have to make sure you're good on when you're running tempo 
the way Florida likes to Florida State likes to employ it. I mean you got to make sure everyone's set everyone's communicating correctly because a third and six versus a third and one two completely different situations for an offense. Well now what you're talking about Todd Grantham might bring the heat with a third down and six. Yeah keep an eye on the edge number 33 David Reese. Here he comes. And there's movement again. Was there contact first though by Joseph. I think there was which would mean five yards against the defense. I'll start. No. Number 59. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. I mean, you're at home though and you're getting called for false starts on your home field on consecutive plays. That's a fourth penalty on FSU today. Man I'm really surprised by this. They actually got Brady Scott but look at Voshan Joseph go in and it feels like that was almost simultaneous like it was started by Voshan Joseph over the football. He got back on side there was no contact by Joseph and he was way into the neutral zone though I'm a little surprised by that call. So now it's third and 11 it was third and one. Francois with time. Oh there was a receiver open downfield instead he threw it short and it was nearly picked off by Gardner Johnson. There is a penalty marker down in the secondary. But man Francois had a receiver down the seam there. Yeah, I think they're going to get Voshan Joseph here. Holding. Defense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. So Florida State gets a first down by penalty. We've had three straight penalties, two on the Knolls, and now this one on Florida. Yeah, and you actually look at this. It looks like it's right here. It looks like that's where the call is. As Cam Akers is trying to cross face Voshan Joseph, you see that left arm reach out and grab Cam Akers as he tries to hit that angle route. It's a good call by the official. So first down on the Florida State 28 yard line. They'll give it to Akers off the right edge. Breaks a tackle. Pushed out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Akers rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. And he's under 700 this year, even with 110 yards against Boston College last week. But so much of that is the offensive line. The coaches said he's really handled it well. He's a young guy, just a true sophomore. This is going to be maybe a double pass. Yes, a deep ball thrown to Neighbors. He fell down. Oh, Neighbors lost his footing on the pass by Matthews, incomplete. And you can actually see Chauncey Gardner Johnson saying, Look, 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 hang on. They're in an unusual alignment. But the rest of the Florida Gators don't recognize it. Just a little outside where the throw might be. But my goodness, if he keeps his feet, that's likely a catch for Neighbors. Then it's third and five. You see Akers leaving the backfield. Francois, pressure coming, takes a shot down the field and thrown out of bounds. Boy, Chauncey Gardner had a hold of Terry, but maybe while the ball was in the air, they ruled it uncatchable because it landed a few yards out of bounds. I'll tell you, Greg, Dave, this entire drive for Florida State essentially encapsulates their entire season. Take two steps forward, one step back. You've got penalties, you've got guys falling down, you can't get lined up. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable with the athleticism we see on the field with this team, but the lack of execution and discipline is alarming. And now the Knolls have to kick it back inside four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Good punt, driving Swain inside his 15 yard line. And good coverage by Florida State. Swain tackled at the 24. 52 yard punt. Eight yard return, no score, late first. Early, but the last two years, a pair of six lost seasons. Could be seven losses. And the first losing season since Bobby Bowden's first year, 1976, unless the Knolls win this game today. Florida ball. And back the throw goes Franks. Looking deep. Got single coverage downfield. Almost caught, but incomplete. Unable to hang on was Tyree Cleveland. Let's check in with Matt Berry in the studio.
All right, Matt, and no score here. Tyree Cleveland, the intended receiver, injured on the incompletion. off to the Florida locker room after being injured on the previous play which was an incompletion so second and ten on the Gator 24 yard line another pass play here Franks has a completion to Grimes but he's brought down at the 30 gain of six here's, here's the, the injury. injury yeah here's the injury to Tyree Cleveland as he goes down you see him land awkwardly on that right shoulder he walked off gingerly that a lot of attention being paid to that right arm. Hope everything's okay with him. He's their speedster and their deep threat. And immediately taking him into the locker room, guys. Here's a swing pass on third down and a first down for the Gators. Josh Hammond. And he had Grimes out there blocking against Asante Samuel. They went to high school. What a together great. in Sunrise, Florida. Yeah, what a great block by Grimes. Really made the play to get the conversion. Nice fill-in for the injured Tyree Cleveland. First down on the 39-yard line. Scarlett running left. Picks up about four. It's the second time in the history of Florida football that they've won eight games after being under 500 a year ago. The last time uh, was uh, 1980. Florida won eight games after a winless 1979 season. And so Mullen with the second most wins by a first year FBS head coach Josh Heupel UCF have won 11 games you wonder if they'll get 12 now that McKenzie Milton is certainly out after that horrific leg and drink. Here's Franks throwing it downfield the diving attempt and it's a catch pulled in by Jefferson inside the 20 yard line for 37 yards. What a beautiful catch by Jefferson. Fully extended. Does he secure it? Looks like he does. Yeah. Remember, the ball can touch the ground as long as there's not a lot of movement. Once it does, it does look like that ball is secured, but they're definitely going to take another look at it. Yeah, as long as you don't lose control. Pulling on the field is a catch. Previous play is under review. And Jefferson is injured. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Catch. First down. Media timeout. Van Jefferson, whose dad, Sean, played 13 years in the NFL with an incredible catch. The ruling on the field stands according to replay. Yeah, and if you see it, it touches the ground. That's clear, but it can touch the ground as long as the ball doesn't move once it touches the ground. So it's pretty clear 
just based on what the official said. He said the call stands. They can't confirm it, but it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn. And based on the angles that we took a look at, it was the correct call by this ACC officiating crew. I'll tell you, it was a great effort, guys, but also a terrific throw from Felipe Franks right there because he had to get that ball overneath the underneath, over the underneath defender. He wanted to throw it early, Greg. He just had to wait that split second for Jefferson to cross the field. Yeah, I thought he had a chance at him right out of Jefferson's break, yep. but it being a slower developing route, not a lot of guys can overcome that time that he took to evaluate it and survey it. But because of Felipe Franks' big arm, he can get it 65 yards down the field if necessary. And he made a nice throw, like you alluded to, Tom, over the defender. And now Florida is in the red zone for the second time. They were stopped on downs the first time. Franks running it here and doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard as Leonard Warner is there first for Florida State defensively. Defensively, Florida State has done a really nice job against the run all season. Harlan Barnett, their defensive coordinator, comes from the Michigan State coaching tree. And if you talk to Coach D'Antonio, he says, hey, 1A, 1B, and 1C is stop the run. It's been obvious with how much attention they've paid to that part of the offensive plan so far this season. Yeah, they only give up three yards a carry, which is 15th best in the country. Here's a pass play on second down. Jefferson able to stay in bounds. They rule him out at the 13-yard line. So he got six yards on the play, pushed out by Stanford Samuels. So third down, you wonder, since Florida went for it on fourth down from the two, if Dan Mullen will consider going for it if they don't pick it up here at third and four. Franks to the air. Looking. Leaves the pocket. Dragged down at the 10-yard line. So he got a couple yards. It's fourth and two again. He's got to kick the ball here, guys. He has to. He's going to. You're playing great defense. Florida State can't move it. You've already let three points off the board by going before. You have to. And a great effort there by Brian Burns to bring Felipe Franks, who's a big boy, down in the open field as he retract after his pass rush to force the field goal. That's it. They snap it before the end of the quarter. They do. And it's good from true freshman Evan McPherson as one quarter is in the books here in Tallahassee. McPherson on the season, 14 of 16 on field goals this season. So it's 3 nothing Florida. We'll be back after this message and a word from our A by Jarrett as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. 3 nothing Florida after one here in Tallahassee. This season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. I want to send our best wishes to two of the members of our crew who are not with us today. Uh, Roger McNally and Bob Bortz uh, get well soon guys. I know this is our last game as a crew until bowl season as Florida State decides to bring it out Keyshawn Helton and he gets absolutely throttled at the 15. There is a penalty marker down at the 32 yard line as we take a look at our unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. It was last week DeAndre Francois to Marion Taylor a 74 yard touchdown pass. The first FSU player since Peter Warwick 20 years ago with two 70 yard receiving touchdowns in the same year. And it gives the Knowles a win over a ranked team and keeps their hopes of a bowl appearance alive. Remember, they've been to a bowl game 36 straight years. Holding, by the way, was the call on the kickoff. As uh, again, a poor decision by Helton just to run it out of the end zone. Should have stayed put. But you look at some of their deficits, they were down to Samford. Yeah, and came back to win that game and couldn't get anything going in that game either. I mean, it's been pretty remarkable. This group's been resilient. You have to give them that. There's a lot of issues that I have with the decisions and some of the penalties and just unsound play, but they've been resilient. They've bounced back. Here's Patrick on first down, lowers the shoulder and runs over Jawan Taylor to the 13-yard line, picking up four. 
You know, so it's so difficult guys when, when you're trying to be a tempo team tempo is all about getting first downs if you can't get first downs you can't be who you are and it's one of the reasons why this offense has sputtered so significantly they can't ever get into rhythm they have three first downs so far here today wow what a shot as Patrick lowers the boom on Voshan Joseph at 235 Patrick outweighs the Miami middle linebacker I'm telling you man Bojan Joseph will hit you too, but don't stand on the tracks while the train's coming through. Patrick's a load when he gets full head of steam. And they run it here on third down and two with Patrick. Going to be close. Sean Davis in there first. Patrick is injured on the play. So you see Florida State is short. So fourth down. They'll tend to Patrick will step aside. On ABC and the ESPN app, they have split the last four meetings. USC's won the last two at the Coliseum. Here's the punt by Tyler, and it drives Swain back. Inside is 25, and he lets it go. It does check up, and Florida will have it at the 26-yard line, a 57-yard punt. Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these, awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete. Pretty good turnout. We weren't sure what we would have today, but it is a rivalry game. You do have a lot of Florida fans. I think the image that everybody recalls is when they were playing Clemson and the stadium was half full in the fourth quarter. He had that professor with his shirt off enjoying <laughs> a sunny day and a good book. And, and reading a book called Dark Places. When you lose that badly, I think that's a very appropriate title. Florida will run it to the left on first down and look out. There goes P. Ryan. Inside the 30, nobody going to catch him. 74-yard touchdown. As soon as he got past the line of scrimmage, you knew it. He was out the gate. The longest Florida play from scrimmage this year, a 74-yard touchdown run by LaMichael P. Ryan. McPherson's point after 10-0 Gators. Well, the Florida Gators have hung their hat on the running game all season long. It's been Scarlett, it's been Pierce, but right here it's P. Ryan out the gate. And he extends the Gator lead to 10. Warfel threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. And it's 10-0 here, Florida, as the 11th-ranked Gators lead the unranked Knowles early in the second quarter. Let's go back to the touchdown by P. Ryan. It was really well blocked on the front. You're going to see really nice work by the Gator offensive line as P. Ryan tries to stretch it to the outside. But there's a lot of issues with the defense here. Look at A.J. Westbrook. He fills this void when P. Ryan is actually working to the outside. That's just a really poor run fit by the safety for the Florida State defense. And P. Ryan, as soon as he has that crease, he's out the gate. Greg, that's why you hear coaches all the time talking about gap integrity, gap responsibility, leveraging the football back to the inside. That's a prime example. You have to be sound at the second and third level in your run fits. That's how you get to five and six. Francois' pass caught. The knee was down on the catch by D.J. Matthews. Short gain on first down. At some point, Florida State is going to have to figure out a way to be a little more effective through the air. So far, DeAndre Francois has only five passing yards, and he's got to stretch the defense, and that offensive line has to give him time to locate wide receivers downfield. 
They run it though on second down and Cam Akers gets the carry for a couple of yards polite on the tackle. There's a Florida State player that lost a helmet there one of the offensive linemen Alec Everly their center is making his 44th straight start. He'll have to come out for a play on senior day. So now it's third down. You need you haven't got past the 33 yard line. You need to yeah. throw the ball to get a first down. You got a backup center baby and Johnson. In. And if I'm Florida I'm putting my best pass rusher right over that center. I mean I want to make him think maybe I can get him to throw a snap off target because he's coming in cold into the game. I tell you fellas this Florida State offense has passed the 30 yard line one time in this entire game. And that was to the 33 earlier. So uh, tough to play good offense when you can't cross midfield. Francois facing pressure. Akers wide open. The Gators lost him in space. And there he goes past the 40. Akers inside the 10. Touchdown, no. Penalty marker down. 70 yard touchdown if it stands. It won't. And it's an illegal shift penalty that does in Florida State. Sixth penalty of the first half by FSU. Look at the motion. He is moving, and this wide receiver is still moving. And that wipes the gigantic play. Did you see it there? It happened just slightly before we okay. took a look at it right there. And he's just right before when that play was rolling. You're going to see the motion. Two guys moving at the same time. Look, he starts, he starts the motion. Watch. Right there, he starts the motion. Francois does. And it's still not set. On the right hand side. Well, and also on the left hand side, yeah. you see a receiver move up. Ticky tack. Have that. But you're right, it's just more undisciplined play by Florida State. Francois on third down and 10, climbs the pocket, throws a dart, but it's too high and a little behind. Matthews, incomplete. Another punt coming. And that's on the quarterback, but it's also a little bit on offensive coordinator Walt Bell. It took him a long time to get set up, it took him a while. To get the signal in from the sideline. But the quarterback, DeAndre Francois, has to look to his left, look to his right, make sure everybody's set, and then bring the motion. He's played a lot of football. Have to be cognizant of the movement that's going on as you're getting ready to snap the football. Logan Tyler getting a workout, his fifth punt of the day. He's averaging 51 yards a boot. And it's another good kick. Fielded on the 24 by Swain. Makes the first guy miss. And up to the 34 yard line. 51 yard punt. Tomorrow morning on Sunday NFL Countdown, before facing Aaron Rodgers, Viking safety Harrison Smith goes one on one with Darren Woodson, the All Pro safety, who Smith has modeled his game after. And also a story on. Cam Newton of the Carolina Panthers Sunday NFL count on 10 a.m. Eastern ESPN as well as the ESPN app and then Monday night football. How do you top last Monday night Rams <laughs> Chiefs all the pressure on the Titans and Texans but there's some exciting quarterback play there as well with Marcus Mariota and Deshaun Watson the Texans have won seven in a row. Yeah they're playing as well as anybody started the season really looked like they had nothing going this year it just wasn't their season and then sure enough what a turnaround. For Coach O'Brien. They were calling for O'Brien to be fired after that bad start in September. Here's Scarlett off the right side. Past the line of scrimmage for a gain of one. Good job there by Dontavius Jackson. If Florida wins, the Gators finishing more than likely in the top 12 of the college football playoff rankings and a New Year's Six Bowl which is quite the accomplishment given where this program was at this time a year ago when they were four and seven. And Dan Mullen deserves a lot of credit in his first year. We're getting this thing pointed in the right direction. They'll run it again on second and nine and Scarlett is tripped up at the thirty nine. 
third down. Dan Mullen has just done such a great job. And he calls his own plays. And he does a really nice job of taking what the defense gives him. As you can see, big turnarounds for a number of programs this year, but none of those groups, I don't think, have turned it around quite as much as what Florida has done this year, given the state of the SEC East and the way it's consistently getting better on an annual basis. Their losses were to Kentucky, Georgia. The really bad loss was Missouri at home. Got a stoppage of play. There was movement by Florida. When you think about his best record, the best record at, at Mississippi State for Dan Mullen was 10 and 3, and that was in 2014 when he took that program to heights that had never been. They got a number one ranking at one point. And you look at Dak Prescott and the success he's had with the Dallas Cowboys, and a lot of that is because of being under Dan Mullen. No question. He felt like there was a ceiling at Mississippi State. There's no ceiling at Florida. You can win a lot of games and a lot of championships as the head coach of the Gators. That's why he's in Gainesville. Up there, he knows that having won two as an assistant here at Florida. It's a big third and nine for the Florida State defense. They bring four and Frank's in trouble. Chase down, gets rid of the pass incomplete before he's dragged down by Warner. But the Knowles defense gets off the field. You'll see this Florida State group. I mean, they do a good job of creating movement in the front. They're an athletic bunch. You see the twist. Just kind of dislodges the engagement that those Florida offensive linemen have. It's an athletic group for Florida State. It's one area where they've been consistent all year long is in their defensive front. DJ Matthews is deep for Florida State. Bear caught. At the 18-yard line, before he was bumped by Tony, 48-yard punt. Let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings, brought to you by Capital One. The Iron Bowl today at 3:30. Clemson, South Carolina on ESPN tonight. Notre Dame, SC on ABC tonight. Ohio State up on Michigan now 14-6. We just saw the Buckeyes last week. Their defense really struggled in that game. There's no question with Dwayne Haskins. They have the firepower to win that game. Yeah, they do. I mean, they have a lot of pieces, but for whatever reason, when you watch Ohio State, they just can't seem to put it all together. It's, it's almost frustrating. You see that Urban Meyer's frustrated, visibly agitated on the sideline when he watches some of those plays his defense gives up. Here's Akers on first down, up to about the 23. So if Ohio State, let's say Oklahoma loses to Texas, if Ohio State wins out, beats Michigan, beats Northwestern, do the Buckeyes jump Oklahoma? If Oklahoma beats Texas, or do the Sooners control their own destiny? Uh, I think Ohio State right now, it depends a little bit on how they look. Have they shored up some of those issues that they have on the defensive side? Because I know for a fact that Oklahoma has it based on last night's performance. Gave up 56 points and won the game against West Virginia. Francois gets leveled, and he throws it out of bounds. Just doesn't have a lot of time back there. Was trying to hit Murray, third down and six. I think it would be Ohio State, guys. I, I, it's a complete top-to-bottom team. Ohio State's maybe had some of their issues. They've been sloppy. They've been undisciplined, heavily, heavily penalized. But if you want to give a team a chance from a personnel standpoint to actually win a national championship on the defensive side of the football, how is that team going to come from the Big 12? I just don't think it can. Yeah. The, the team that could make you know, all this stuff even crazier is Georgia, right? Yeah. Or Auburn today if they knock off Alabama. Or Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship sure. game. Remember, they played Michigan. They had Michigan down 17-0 in the regular season. Penalty marker down movement again by Florida State. This will be the seventh first half penalty on the Seminoles. Group up front is antsy, guys. They're, this offensive line has struggled, as we've talked about, for Florida State. Those guys on the defensive front for Florida are glass eaters, particularly off the edge. Yeah, it's just you're so hamstrung if you can't protect. I mean, it, it's been something that's been a problem with Florida State for the last five years. I and mean, they've had good quarterbacks. Francois is an elite quarterback when given time, just never seems to, to get enough of it. That's third down and 11, and boy, Francois throws high and complete. There was pressure on him. Helton, the intended receiver, Zaniga, right on the snap. 
Put us in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, they're so deep at, at defensive end, they take their defensive ends, move them into defensive tackle in obvious passing situations. Here it is, Jabari Zaniga just running right around Arthur Williams, the left guard, and forcing the air and throw. It's hard to be accurate when you know you're about to get hit. Gotta stand in there, be tough, and man, has Francois been tough throughout the course of this season. Just two of six passing for five yards. Florida going to set up the return here. Tyler with another good punt and a fair catch made at the 37 yard line. 48 yard punt, no return. 10 nothing Gators. Saturday afternoon college football presented by Jared. 10 nothing Florida leads Florida State. Get ready to learn something new with today's Aflac game fact. Second game in series history featuring first year head coach at each school back 1960 got to go for the last time Bill Peterson at Florida State Ray Graves at Florida and Florida won in a barn burner three nothing wide open in the middle of the field the catch is made inside the 30 and there goes Grimes breaking a tackle inside the 15 they finally spin him down inside the 10. 53 yard pass play to Trayvon Grimes you're going to see a little RPO action. And you're going to see Grimes get single coverage over the top. It's a nice throw by Felipe Franks. But when you run the ball with such efficiency, that opens up isolations on the outside. But there, Franks is able to locate his big wide receiver, the Ohio State transfer, for a huge play. Back here in Florida is from Fort Lauderdale originally. First and goal for the Gators at the nine-yard line. And this could be a design quarterback run for Franks. Tackle from behind. A sack, loss of two. It's Janarius Robinson, sophomore from Panama City, Florida, whose family home was destroyed because of Hurricane Michael recently. He and his family had to evacuate to Georgia, but everybody's okay. Robinson, through help with the NCAA and the university, was able to get a GoFundMe account, but actually ended up raising double the money he needed. So it's pretty cool that a lot of people stepped up to help Janarius and his family. Second and goal from outside the 10. Empty backfield. Franks looking pass. Batted down by Robinson. Have a sequence. Mr. Robinson is right around the edge, and there is a ton of green grass available. If he were able to get it to Grimes on the little tunnel screen, Robinson says, no, sir. Knocks it down. Robinson so long, I don't know how you get it around him. I'm telling you, that's tough, man. That's a great play by the edge rusher. And now a must-have for Florida State defensively. Got to hold the Gators to a field goal because they can't do anything on offense. Looks like an all-out pressure look right here. Play clock at one. They get a call timeout. So while we have a moment, let's check in with Matt Berry in the studio. Now this week, uh, Matt, UCF jumped ahead of Ohio State in the top 10. It's going to be really interesting to see how the playoff committee handles UCF now that yeah. Mackenzie Milton is out. If they lose to Memphis in the uh, championship game of the AAC next week, uh, obviously they won't be in a New Year's Six game anyway. No doubt. And a huge game, too, tonight. I mean, Boise State has a massive game tonight. They're in the, in the realm. They play in Utah State, and that's a heck of a game. On ESPN tonight, yep. And in Boise, and the winner of that game, they could potentially find their way into the New Year's Six if, in fact, UCF is upset by Memphis without their quarterback next week. Third and goal for Florida. From the 11. And a Florida State defender is in the backfield. Brian Burns. The kind of stuff that, I mean, at some point. Offside. Defense. Number 99. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I mean, you can blame the players. You can blame the coaches. The bottom line is it's ridiculous when you're getting offside penalties called in a must have situation and it's your eighth penalty in a quarter and a half. It just can't happen. I mean, 
critical down and distance. Just, you have to be so mindful of everything. You've got to watch the ball. You're on offense or on defense at the Florida State. So now third and goal from the six. Looks like a change of the play call here. The timer's down to six. Let's see if Franks finds Swain on a corner out. Franks has time. Robinson coming in. Franks has to throw it away. Good coverage in the end zone by the Florida State defensive back. Swain was the intended receiver. Felipe Franks upset with the referee. He thought there should have been a face mask call by Robinson, and he's right. You hit the quarterback in the head. That's a personal foul. Yeah, and you grab the face mask, too. He's in the throwing posture. I mean, that to me, should have been half the distance of the goal and a first down for the Gators. And not to pile on, but again, that's just something if you're really Taggart, I mean, you got to be pulling guys out of the game when they make mistakes like that, even when they're not called. Short field goal try, 23 yards for McPherson. And the Gators extend their lead to 13-0 over Florida State. They pass Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville back at Duke Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. The Seminoles trying to keep a ball streak of 36 consecutive years alive, but doesn't look good right now. Down 13 0 to Florida. They have not moved the ball past the 33 yard line in this game. They've also committed eight penalties for 51 yards. So they have more yards and penalties than they do total offense. 47 offensive yards. And they've given up 234 to Florida. Evan McPherson will kick it deep. We saw a mistake earlier by a return man bringing it out of the end zone. This time they'll let it go, so it's a touchback. Let's take a look at Do More in a Jiffy, brought to you by Jiffy Lou. Jabari Zaniga has been unblockable early in this football game, not just as a pass rusher, but also in the run game. Right there, tracking down Francois, and then on a third and short, stopping Patrick. And finally, he makes his presence felt on the pass rush around the edge. He's so disruptive, one of three edge rushers for the Gators that can absolutely change the game. Him, Ja'Kai Polite, and C.C. Jefferson are three of the best in the entire country when it comes to affecting opposing quarterbacks. Emily Marker thrown in the secondary. Illegal substitution, defense, more than 11 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, right there, they had CeCe Jefferson on the field. We just talked about the three defensive ends. Well, they had all three defensive ends on the field right there. All trying to get after the quarterback. Here's a wide receiver screen, and nothing doing. Boshan Joseph all over that. Keith, or uh, Treshawn Harrison on the tackle, true freshman from Seattle. So... Nothing there, second down. This needs to be a part of this offense. In a game like this, against an elite group rushing the passer, you have to be able to throw screens and disrupt the rhythm of those pass rushers on the opposite side. But Boshan Joseph sniffs it out and makes the play. There's second down. Akers gets the call. And it looks like he's got a first down past the 30-yard line. Cam Akers, a sophomore from Clinton, Mississippi, at 110 yards on 14 carries against Boston College. 19 yards on seven attempts in this game. He gets an opportunity again here and gets drilled by Polite and Reese, short game. I love Cam Akers, such a great runner. Had a good year last year. Hasn't been quite as explosive this year. Has had some moments, but the consistency just hasn't really been there. In large part due to the fact that his offensive line has just been so up and down. So this is the first time Florida State has been past its 35-yard line. Francois has time to throw, and it's incomplete. 
intended for Upshur downfield with Gardner Johnson in coverage. Francois trying to throw this into very tight coverage. Little contact there as you can see Chauncey Gardner Johnson closing in on Upshur. Probably a good no call given that the pass was a little off target. I agree. 0 for 6 on third down for Florida State. Only five passing yards for Francois. He needs 10 to move the chains. Francois has to leave the pocket. Past the 40, turns it upfield and gets the first down. Good run by the quarterback, DeAndre Francois, to the 46 yard line before Voshan Joseph makes the play. Really nice job by Francois. Nobody open downfield. Let that clock go off really quick in your head and try to make it with your legs. Great athlete is Francois. First third down conversion of the day for Florida State. Francois over the middle. And for the first time, the Knolls are in Gator territory. Nasir Upshaw, just his fourth catch of the year. I'm not sure Nasir, Nasir Upshaw knew that it was coming to him because he was just kind of jogging through his route. Francois put it right on his big body and forced him to catch it. Look at this formation. Four men to the bottom of the screen. They fake the screen and throw over the middle to Murray inside the 20. On senior day, their most reliable receiver. Nooney with a 25-yard gain. Well, the quads bunch is so difficult to defend. It's just a quarterback's dream to get Murray in the open field like that. Nice throw. A nice design of the Seminoles offense. They fake the pitch to Matthews. Francois gets drilled. His pass caught one-handed touchdown. Cam Akers, what a grab. As good as it gets. You've got to be kidding me. What a catch. Unbelievable concentration by the sophomore running back. Can you say Sports Center top 10? Cam Akers. Gets Florida State back in the game. They had done nothing offensively until the last few plays, and now they're only done six after the extra point by Ricky Aguayo. DeAndre Francois has been bruised, battered, beaten all season. He hangs in here, takes a shot as he delivers the ball, and Akers does the rest, pinning it against his helmet. The Knolls back in the ball game here in this rivalry with the Gators. Six possessions for Florida State today, a grand total of 42 yards. On that last possession alone, 75 yards. And DeAndre Francois on third and 10 with his legs got a first down, made a couple of great throws, including the touchdown pass to Akers, and then the kickoff sails for the back of the end zone for a touchback. Let's take a look at who's been putting in work, brought to you by Carhartt. Yeah, this play is all created by the motion across the ball, which allows the rotation in the secondary to free up Cam Akers in one-on-one. -on -one. Look at how it influences the secondary. They rock and roll it. And Cam Akers just runs right past Jawan Taylor and makes an unbelievable catch on the seam route. I mean, you don't see catches like that from receivers very often. You never see catches from running backs like that. I mean, that is remarkable. What a play by the sophomore. And if he catches it with two hands, it's a great grab. But he did it with one. See how Florida responds. They're going to stick with the ground game. And Scarlett finds a good hole off that right side of the offensive line. To the 33 yard line for eight yards for Jordan Scarlett. You know, you go back to that drive for Florida State, guys, and we've talked tempo all day long and how important it is to get first downs. The first downs in those drives really put Florida on their heels because all they could do was just line up. There was no plan, there was no coming after them. So, got to get more out of that Florida State offense, put Florida on their heels defensively. And run it again, Scarlett. Grabbed and will not get the first down. Let's check in with Matt.
All right, none of us said we'd be surprised if Ohio State won, but are you surprised by the score? Yes. 21 points against that defense. Keep the football. <laughs> they are clearly off to a really nice start in Columbus. Short yardage situation here for the Gators. Franks is going to hand it off. Scarlett got it. Past the 35 yard line. It's a shove at the end, but forward progress stopped at the 37. DeAndre Francois talking to his offensive lineman there, showing some leadership on that Florida State bench. Scarlett again, four straight carry for Scarlett. Whoa! He got rid of a defender, Dontavius Jackson, that time. A forearm shiver with the ball in his right hand. He takes his left hand and drills the linebacker trying to make the tackle. How about this right here? Right in the hole. Boom! And Jackson goes flying. Scarlett, man, he runs angry. Every time he touches the football, he looks mad. Well, he didn't get a carry last week. They played Idaho. He got some rest. He's carried it on five straight plays. They get him this time on second and four. Maybe lost a yard on the play. It was Dontavious Jackson with a little revenge. He was in there first, and Jade would be as well for FSU. Third down coming up. It's a huge third down for Florida State. Their offense just went down the field. And now they have a chance to get off the field and maybe get it back to that offense in a two-minute situation to steal some points before the end of the half. Huge play right here for the Seminoles defense. Franks with one-on-one -on -one coverage finds Jefferson for a first down out to midfield. Stanford Samuels in coverage and Jefferson won that battle. Now all the attention from Florida State was to the left side of the field which gave Felipe Franks and Jefferson one-on-one -on -one coverage on the slant. It was a nice throw by the quarterback. Critical down in distance. That's twice now Greg you get that isolated slant versus a tall corner and Stanford Samuels 2-0 for Florida this time. Franks flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his left, and throws out of bounds, trying to hit Grimes. Leonard Warner and Brian Burns both with some pressure. 2.06 on the clock here in the half, 13-7 Florida. This part of the field, too, I mean, this is when you can start to get a little aggressive, knowing that you're near the 50. You don't want to potentially give it back to Florida State with a ton of time, but this part of the field, knowing you can pin them really deep, they need to be cognizant of the clock. Throw it. If you have to throw it away, no problem. Just live to play the next down. And Greg, Florida gets the ball on offense coming out of the locker room at half. Play clock down to two here, Tom. They snap it, and Franks takes off into the Seminole territory. Close to a first down. It's a good run by Felipe Franks, 6'6", 240-pound quarterback. Does have six rushing touchdowns this season. He's short, third down and one. You would imagine you're probably going to get another quarterback run here to pick up the first down. Felipe Franks is such a big body. If he gets under center, you've got to be very alert for a quarterback sneak. A two for two on third down this drive. P. Ryan is the deep back, not Scarlett. It'll be P. Ryan, and he will not get it. He lost yardage. Great job up front by Florida State. Frederick Jones in there first for the Knowles, along with Burns. Does Dan Mullen go for it again here? Or do you punt and pin Florida State deep? The Knowles are going to use a timeout. That will leave them with two. I'd pin it deep. I'd, I'd punt it. I uh, just I look at this situation. I look at how the first half has gone. Florida, for the most part, has been pretty dominant in a lot of ways. So I would punt it, I would pin Florida State deep, and I would not give them an opportunity to maybe have the lead heading into halftime because of a mistake I might make. Greg, how much credit does DeAndre Francois deserve yeah. for the, the Seminoles just having a shot after what he did last week in the fourth quarter and then what we saw on that last drive? Well, he hung in there. Even on the touchdown pass, he was getting absolutely annihilated as he delivered accurately to Cam Akers. I mean, he has been their backbone. 
In a perfect world, you'd love the running game to be elite, but it just hasn't been this year. It's been kind of up and down. But when Florida State's been good, it's been because of DeAndre Francois and his strong right arm. So he's got to be at his best in this drive and in the second half to pull off the upset. Obviously, Florida State will be on alert here for a fake on fourth down and three. Townsend waits till his gunners get down the field and the return man got drilled unnecessarily by James and the ball is picked up Nick Farr the long snapper not sure what he was thinking but then the Gators stopped and the return man Matthews took it past the 30 yard line. The long snapper far shoved the returner Dan Mullen saying what are you doing you just gave him 15 yards and then they kind of slept on Matthews who got a great return. One number. Kick catching interference number 41 kicking team. That penalty will be declined. It will be a spot foul. The results of the play will give a more advantage to the receiving team. Therefore, first down Florida State at the dead ball spot. And look at number 41. Ryan Farr, the long snapper, runs over DJ Matthews. No one's just really stops. paying attention. I mean, <laughs> it, at that point, the ball's still live. It hadn't been downed. It's a heads up play. Right there by Matthews to pick it up and advance the football. I don't know what Farr was thinking. Way too much attention being paid to the Florida long snappers the last three weeks. Right there. <laughs> That's right. Right there. Farr making a really bad decision to knock over Matthews. And then two weeks ago against South Carolina, down Super 10 against Catch South Super. Carolina doing That's the air the guitar. Was dead when the receiving team, Florida State player, picked it up. The kick catching interference to be enforced 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So it was dead. They just completely did a 180 on the field. Still a 15 yard penalty for kick catch interference and it puts the ball uh, past the 20 yard line. 56 seconds left. Florida State with two timeouts. You wonder how Willie Taggart. will handle this situation. The return man did signal fair catch. Therefore it was dead as soon as he touched it and that's the reason why they had to bring it back and then assess the penalty. Francois throwing. It's caught past the 30 yard line by Terry. Close to a first down. It is a first down so the clock will stop to move the chains. They'll start the clock and they're ready for play and the Knowles will keep their two timeouts. Francois to the air again. Pressure coming. He gets drilled. Finds Terry again. Did he get a foot down? No. He landed out of bounds. Incomplete. Donovan Steiner in coverage. It was a really nice effort by Terry. Just a little bit wide. You have to also give credit to Steiner. Knowing where he was at on the field and forcing Terry out of bounds as he was airborne. Second and 10, 40 seconds to go. Florida State down six here at the end of the first half. Francois trouble again. Throws a deep ball. Overshot the intended receiver, Keyshawn Helton. 34 seconds left, third and 10. Yeah, interesting look right there defensively for Florida. I mean, their safeties were almost 30 yards apart, doubling the outside wide receivers which gave you a ton of room in the middle of the field just too much juice on it on the throw by DeAndre Francois and that's where the receivers for Florida State not very big Todd Grantham the defensive coordinator must feel pretty good uh, about his matchups with his safeties over the slots third and ten do you throw it try to get the first down just run the ball and then the half because if you don't pick up third down Florida's going to call timeout it's fourth down you punt it back to the Gators I'd throw a screen see if I can't maybe make a guy miss and find some open space 
coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report momentarily with Kevin Nagandi, Mac Brown, and Jonathan Vilma. They will obviously be checking in on Ohio State, Michigan, a first half thriller in Columbus. Georgia rolling over Georgia Tech. Both you and Tom said that uh, you thought that would be a good game. Syracuse, meanwhile, going for nine wins, taking on BC. Michigan, we're told, scored twice in six seconds. So the guys will give you the highlights and updates on that score at the big house. It'll be a really interesting second half. Because if you look at engage the momentum right now, it's in favor of Florida State. When the first 25 minutes of the ball game, it's all Florida. Florida State offensively starting to find themselves a little bit. Francois getting a little more accurate, a little more comfortable. Second half, we're in for what should be a good one here in Tallahassee. It'll be interesting to see how Florida State handles this third and ten. Is it a high percentage pass? Keep the clock moving. Do they run it? Francois sacked. At the 28, and Florida, you would think, would call its final timeout, and it will with 27 seconds left. Zaniga got the sack, and so Florida will get the ball back with a little bit of time on the clock. So we were talking a little bit earlier about DeAndre Francois. Let, let's talk about the other quarterback. Yeah. And Felipe Franks, uh, no touchdowns in the game, but he's been solid, and he's a guy that was benched a few times and almost benched again, but an injury by Kyle Trask changed the course maybe of the rest of the season for Florida. Do you think he's been maligned unfairly in, no. in Gainesville? I, I think that he right now is a game manager. At this point in his career, he doesn't have to do a whole lot because of how good they've played on the defensive side of the football. But when you are Florida and you're accustomed to seeing Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks and everyone is going to be measured to the standard that was set by Tim Tebow a decade ago. You're going to fall short of those expectations. And I think that he's done just fine. He hasn't done anything catastrophic. His defense is playing well. He seems to continue to be smart with the football and not take unnecessary risks. Hey Dave Martin Scorsese called says he's looking for some extras in his next film. Yeah I like the suit Dave. That's got a very good fellas casino feel to it. Is Tommy two times get the papers get the papers coming up. And yeah, keep it up and Nikki Santoro will be on the sideline next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you in a swamp somewhere. Timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. A timeout here called by keep laughing Tom uh, by Florida State tonight. It's uh, number three Notre Dame and USC from Los Angeles. The Irish win. It's an unbeaten season and a berth in the college football playoff. Eight Eastern will kick it off by Pacific and ABC. All right, real big picture here with Notre Dame. We know that they can win the night, but can they win it all? Are they good enough to hang and beat Alabama? They are. And it would take a monumental effort, don't get me wrong, in order to beat Alabama or Clemson every year right now. It, it takes a massive, massive accomplishment. So yeah I mean it's is it likely probably not but it's certainly possible they're so active and athletic on the defensive front their quarterback is steady and Ian book they can run the football effectively really been impressed with Notre Dame Freddie Swain the return man has it on the 20 yard line and tackled at the 16. We'll see now Florida just takes a knee. All right, Tom, uh, your thoughts on what Greg just said that Notre Dame can hang and possibly beat Alabama. Absolutely. I, listen, I think the matchup for the playoffs important for Clemson. What seed are they? Excuse me for Notre Dame. What seed are they? Because I don't know if Clemson is a is a, a matchup for Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame would like to play Clemson. I think they look at Clemson as being an advantageous matchup for them. So be that two to three seed if you're Notre Dame may be the best opportunity because I don't know if anybody right now is an ideal matchup for the University of Alabama. And if Clemson and Notre Dame are playing in Dallas, tell me that won't be a Whoa. pseudo home game for the Irish. No doubt. Just given the stakes and given how much money Clemson fans have had to spend over the last couple of years going to championship games. So I think that that would be a remarkable matchup if it comes to fruition. 13 7. It looked like Florida was going to route Florida State, but a nice drive by the Seminoles. Midway through that second quarter to make it a game again. When we return, Kevin Nagani, Mac Brown, and Jonathan Vilma have the Capital One halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
Cats in jeopardy if they lose today. No bowl game and a five and second seven record. If Florida wins today, the Gators will likely be in a New Year's Six Bowl. Felipe Franks has got the Gators off to an eight and three start and a 13 seven lead. But Florida State had the go ahead touchdown called back because of an illegal shift penalty. One of five uh, one of eight infractions by Florida State five penalties by Florida. Piran had 82 yards rushing but 74 of those came on one play and most of Francois 70 passing yards came on that scoring drive which included a one handed catch by Cam Akers for the lone no touchdown. Florida will get the ball to start the second half. Deep Freddie Swain and Kadarius Tony. Logan Tyler with a busy first half mainly punting seven punts for Tyler will kick it deep and this will be a touchback it'll come out to the 25 take a look at our Pacific Life game summary Florida had 264 yards of total offense Greg McElroy but most of them or the third of them anyway came on this one play here yeah just a big run by P Ryan around the left hand side one of the few plays that Florida State did not hold up well in their run defense and then the drive that you alluded to capped off by a one handed catch by Cam Akers in the end zone just a beautiful throw even better catch and a nice response because had they not scored there this game could have gotten sideways quickly for the Seminoles. Jordan Scarlett runs on first down and gets about five out to the 30 yard line Dave Pash Greg McElroy here in the booth and Tom Luganville down on the field all right what has to happen for Florida State not only to take the lead but end up winning this ball game they have to do a better job at the line of scrimmage it feels like it's the same thing every single week with Florida State when they protect DeAndre Francois and give him time to locate these receivers downfield he can be effective and they have to also to commit to the run game give Cam Akers a shot P Ryan breaks free and gets the first down out to the 37 yard line Three straight run plays to start the second half. P. Ryan passed the 40, got five more on the ground. Let's check in with Tom. Well, guys, Dan Mullen, the Florida head coach, very blunt with me coming out of the locker room. We did not perform well in the red area. We've got to score touchdowns as, a, as opposed to field goals. He said, had we done that, this game would be over. Instead, we're in a dogfight for 30 minutes. Two field goals and a turnover in the red zone as Franks gets the first down drilled at the 50-yard line. Frank shakes it off as he hops to his feet. First down, Florida. That's yeah, pretty clear, though, that Florida challenged that offensive line at halftime. Trying to now establish the run game. That's four straight runs for the Gators. Clearly, they're committed to it here in the second half. Here they go again. P. Ryan, another big running lane between the tackles. Down to the 44 of Florida State. Marvin Wilson on the stop. Four plays so far here in the quarter. All on the ground for Florida. And A.J. Westbrook starting safety. Senior playing his final home game here at Doak Campbell shaken up. You know, Greg, Dave, you get the sense that this has been Florida's formula all year long, especially when we've had them on three previous contests. They come out of the locker room. They establish the run. They don't put too much of the offense on Felipe Franks right out of the gate. This is kind of their M.O. Yeah, if they can run the ball, they will. That's what they want to look like. They want to be 60, 40, 75, 25 in that range when it comes to run to pass on first down. If they're around 50, 50, that means they're probably not running it as effectively as they would like. So and now Felipe Franks not overly accurate with the football throwing it. So trying to really put the onus on what is a veteran group up front, but a group that has at times this season been very up and down. 
Well, you talk about you, you don't want balance if you're Florida. Ask Mike Leach what he thinks about 50-50, <laughs> right? He says it's stupid if you want balance. <laughs> How about Washington, though? What a win last night in Pullman to end not only Washington State's hopes, but the Pac-12 hope of getting into the college football playoff. Franks keeps it here and has a first down inside the 35. 13 more yards on the ground for the Gator quarterback. And a nice job by Felipe Franks reading the end man of the line of scrimmage. That's Brian Burns, number 99. You see him crash with the running back, which is a pull read for Felipe Franks. He does a nice job doing so and getting vertical for a nice pickup. Franks now pulls it back and looks to throw, and it's Grimes inside the 20 for a first down to the 16-yard line. 16-yard play on the first pass of the third quarter. Terrific opening drive by the Gators. Yeah, and they just fake the quarterback run, drop him back. Nice, easy curl route to get Felipe Franks' arm involved in this offensive series. Here's Pirine running right. And he can't get through that hole. Got enough running room to pick up about three down to the 13. One thing Felipe Franks, as uh, Piran loses a shoe, has done so well the last three games, really all season, is protect the ball. Only six interceptions thrown this year. Yeah, he has done a nice job. He needs to continue to do a nice job here where they have not been very efficient in the red zone over the course of this season. And even worse today against the stout defense. Franks with time leaves the pocket being chased fires end zone almost intercepted. It was broken up by Samuels on the pass intended for Josh Hammond. Good play by Samuels who has four interceptions on the year in the top 10 nationally. Yeah, showing off some of that length. I mean Samuels is six foot two long arms. Does a nice job undercutting what was kind of a late throw by Felipe Franks thought if he would have cut that loose just a little bit earlier he would have had a chance at Hammond but him hanging on to it just a little too long led to the deflection by the defender they are three for nine on third down today third and seven and official stops play as boy Franks got drilled by Burns Dan Mullen wants a penalty Timeout was called timeout. by Florida State. Florida State is the first timeout of the half. Was he burned? Uh, was he drilled by Burns, Greg? That would be a no. Felipe Franks will not win an Academy Award this year, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we call a flop. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. They pass Greg McElroy, Tom Lugan, Bill back in Tallahassee. Big third down for the Gators. Third and seven. A pitch. Scarlett one on one. Pushed out of bounds by true freshman Jaden Woodby. And a late flag gets thrown in the end zone. They're short of the line to gain by about three or four yards. But let's see what the flag is for. But been a combined 13 penalties so far in the game. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number eight, defense. After missing to the goal, automatic first down. Florida State commits some of the dumbest penalties I've ever seen. I mean, what are you doing if you're Stanford Samuels uh, retaliating here against Van Jefferson? Yeah, Hutch, throwing a punch right in front of the official. I mean, you can't do that. I mean, your your freshman makes an unbelievable play. Would be, I mean, get him out. I mean, that, that just you can't do that. So inexcusable and it happens time and time again. I just don't understand for the life of me and the fact that Samuels is sitting there arguing with his head coach about it makes no sense either. Who cares what Van Jefferson is doing to you. First and goal now from the five for Florida. Franks will keep it runs into a defender bounces off of Wilson and at the end the Florida State player Asante Samuel jumps on top of the pile. I'll tell you guys, Willie ha uh, Taggart is not normally overly intense, or overly animated, and he has been laying into Stanford Samuels on this sideline. He should. Second and goal. Franks rolling out, throws. It's a touchdown. Josh Hammond. 
Penalty flag down thrown on the near side at the goal line. Nine penalties on Florida State, five on Florida. Legal substitution, defense, more than 12 players on the field. Penalties declined. Touchdown. So the Gators on the opening drive of the third quarter. Take it the length of the field in 12 plays, four minutes and seven seconds, and Felipe Franks with his 21st touchdown pass. Just a beautiful design there by Dan Mullen. Really nice. McPherson makes it 20 to 7. 11th ranked Florida in front. And this is a really nice design. Look at how Dan Mullen hides the intended receiver. He's squatting and he's around some really big bodies in front of him. So what they do is they just fake a little inside and they sneak Hammond right out into the flats. You don't even see him. No one's accounted for him defensively. It's an easy pitch and catch made a lot easier after your defender gives you a free first down because Stanford Samuels throws a punch after the third down stop. They're 118th in penalty yards, 128th in penalties. So 56 penalty yards, nine penalties. And again, you see Stanford Samuels saying, Van Jefferson, he, ha he had his hands in, in my face. The officials missed it certainly, but when your defense is off the field there and it's going to be a field goal try, you've done your job, that has to be it. Yeah, you got to keep your poise. I mean, I, I get, hey, if it's a physical game, I, it's not always above the belt. Not everyone gets called for everything that happens throughout the course of the game, but there's one rule. You don't throw punches under any circumstance. You know that. I don't care what happened and what the Gator player did. You don't throw a punch. So it'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. So in the first half, you have a penalty that negates a touchdown by Florida State. Yeah, a huge one here, too. This is this one's actually on the quarterback, DeAndre Francois. He sends a guy in motion before the rest of the wide receivers were set. And the massive touchdown to Cam Akers is wiped off the board. And you have this. And yeah, Van Jefferson should not have his hand in Stanford Samuel's face. Shouldn't. Could have called it easily. But what will always get called is the retaliation punch that Stanford Samuels threw right in front of the official. Gotta be smarter than that. Gotta have more poise. To understand the situation in the game. First down on the Florida State 25. Let's see how the Seminoles respond offensively. Cam Akers, who had a, tre a tremendous catch, a one handed grab in the first half. Here running the ball for about four or five yards. Florida State has trailed a lot this year by at least eight points and four of their five wins. The Andre Francois has led three comeback wins in the second half, six in his career. And remember, he basically didn't play last year because of a knee injury in the opener, was the ACC Rookie of the Year two years ago. He certainly has the talent if they can give him time up front and help with a good running game. They got four yards on first down. Akers only going to get about two here. Oshan Joseph in there first, so it'll bring up third down and four. Things slowing down a little too, Greg, in terms of some of the procedure penalties they've had, the motion, two guys moving at once. Not as much warp speed we're seeing here from Florida State as we did in the first half. Going to spread it out here on third down and three. Francois, pass off the mark, intended for the tight end, Trey McKitty. So Florida State goes three and out. Francois frustrated there with McKitty, thinking that he's going to sit it down right at the sticks. Instead, McKitty drifted just a little bit too much to the inside, and him and Francois were not on the same page. Not a good start for the Florida State offense, who came into the half actually starting to move the football with some consistency. Freddie Swain is deep. He has a punt return for a touchdown this year. Tyler with another great kick. Inside the 10. And down at the seven yard line. 63 yard punt. 
Tonight, number three, Notre Dame and USC from the Coliseum. An Irish win. It's a perfect regular season. A spot undoubtedly in the college football playoff. USC coming off that loss to UCLA. It's a rivalry game. Do you see any way the Trojans pull the upset? I don't. Uh, I just look at Notre Dame, and especially after last week's performance against a good Syracuse team. Now, people have questioned, okay, well, Notre Dame's travel. I mean, it's, they're just finding reasons not to like the <laughs> Irish. Well, it's hard to travel from New York City to L.A. Well, I think they'll be okay. I mean, it's a night game. They'll be fine. It, that game was a week ago, too. It's not like they traveled the night minutes. before. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I mean, come on. It, Notre Dame is so complete. They've done a great job this year. I'd be very surprised if that game was competitive tonight. First down on the seven. And that's a lot there given up by that run defense. Five or six on first down for Jordan Scarlett. Leonard Warner on the stop for Florida State. Obviously incredibly important drive here for Florida State's defense. And already 56 rushing yards this quarter for Florida. Yeah, and that's three-yard gains, two-yard gains in the first half. Are starting to become five-yard gains, which is a little concerning if you're Florida State's front seven. Penalty marker down. There was movement here by Florida. Siante Lewis appeared to jump. Prior to the snap, false start, number 80, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Siante Lewis just lined up in a wing alignment. You see him just fall forward just a little bit. Look at the weight on the toes, trying to hold it, trying to hold it, can't do it. That, mu that must be the worst feeling in the world because you start going forward, you can't stop, right? I mean, you're on your toes there. It's it's. A quarterback, I've done that a couple times, leaning backwards, and you kind of fall out <laughs> as you're anticipating the snap. It's not fun. Another run play on second and ten. Scarlet breaks an initial tackle, and man, it takes a lot of guys to wrestle him down at the 12-yard line. Ryan Burns finally helped bring him down. Third down here for Florida, midway through this third quarter with a 13-point lead. Critical stop here for this Florida State defense, not only to get the ball back for their offense. But guys, they finally have a field position advantage. It's the first time all game long for the Seminole defense. No doubt, got to do something to change momentum here. See if they can get to Felipe Franks. They run Scarlett, and he comes up short, tackled by Jackson. Surprised that Dan Mullen elected to run the ball there? He had been getting about five yards a clip, though in the second half and thinking hey spread them out maybe Harlan Barnett the defensive coordinator for Florida State's thinking pass maybe the defenders are thinking pass you can surprise them by keeping it on the ground not shocked by the call especially given the way their defense has played most of the game play a conservative and play keep away if you can now DJ Matthews who had a punt return for a touchdown against Miami he's back deep Tommy Towns in the punt And he gets off a great kick. Matthews lets it go. Down at the 20. So much for flipping the field for Florida State. A 65-yard punt by Tommy Townsend. Today about the fact that Bobby Bowden went for the tie. Didn't go for two. It wasn't enough that they came back from down four touchdowns. I think they had momentum on their side there, too. Uh, going for two would have made some sense. I get it. Florida State back on offense after a punt that went 65 yards. Here's Cam Akers. Up to the 25. Nice run on first down. Yeah, you want to see Cam Akers really start to get involved. To this point, only had 11 carries, which is not an unreasonably small number. It's just guy that talented. What could be your final game of the year? You got to feed him. You go have an empty set here and throw it out in the flat to Harrison. He will not get back to the line of scrimmage. They've tried those screens and they haven't worked. Gardner Johnson there on the tackle along with Steiner. Look at uh, just some of the things that. Have not gone Florida State's way today. The three and out, six of nine possessions, only 135 yards of offense, nine penalties. Yet they're not out of the game. Francois has the ball poked free from behind, and it's recovered by CC Jefferson. 
It was Ja'Kai Polite that chopped it out. A turnover by Florida State. Yeah, you're just going to see Ja'Kai Polite just come right around the edge and attack the throwing arm of DeAndre Francois. You see him dip and rip. What a great job, too, of seeing where he was at in the pocket, adjusting those arms, turning his body back, and just throwing those long arms out and dislodging the football. Ja'Kai Polite has been so good off the edge all year. Makes a huge play there, getting the ball back for his offense. Look how far away he was from DeAndre Francois' arm and still hits the ball. That's his fifth forced fumble of the season. He's great at the strip sack. And now the Gators take over inside the 25 and looking to take a shot to the end zone. It's covered downfield. Franks creates space. Now throws. Caught. Grimes. Touchdown, Florida. In one play after the takeaway. Do they put it out of reach with that score? Excellent job by Felipe Franks. As he doesn't like anything initially, but look at him now move. And watch the signal there. All right, you just saw him move that left arm and say, hey, come back to me, come back to me. As a result, Grimes does come back. That big body Grimes, six foot five. The huge catch radius and a great job by Felipe Franks making the throw and bodying up the big receiver. 27 to 7, Florida. Momentum totally changed after that penalty by Stanford Samuels. It would have been a field goal for the Gators. Instead, it's a touchdown. And then Florida State gives it right back, a forced fumble. And then on the very next play, Franks to Grimes, and the Gators now lead by 20 in Tallahassee. Ball presented by Jared as part of the Jiffy Loop rivalry series. Florida with its longest losing streak in this rivalry, five consecutive to Florida State, but now up 20 points, dominating this third quarter. Be a touchback. The Knowles will start this drive in their 25. But so far in this third quarter, they have just nine yards on six plays and have had the ball for only two minutes. They've turned it over and they've had some costly penalties. Yeah, and it's just so hard when you're Florida State, and this is really for the entire game. I mean, right now on first and second down, they're not getting anything. And then their third down, their average distance to go on third down is over eight and a half yards. That's obvious passing situation against one of the better pressure teams in college football in Florida. They've got to be more efficient on first and second down if they're going to climb back into this. And Ja'Kai Polite now with nine and a half sacks and five force fumbles on the year. Francois, what a job to avoid a sack that time. And not only get positive yards, but pick up six. And at this point of the game, too, I mean, it's obviously a three-score game. Don't have to go hyperspeed. You can still run your offense. Just got to be efficient. Francois will take a shot here for Terry, who adjusts to the ball and makes the catch. This kid's going to be a player. Six foot four, red shirt freshman from Georgia to Marion Taylor who leads all freshmen in the country in yards per catch. Man, I'm so impressed with him. I mean, Terry's going to be a stud. He, he, right now, he's, a, he's kind of a one-trick pony, just a vertical receiver. But when he develops the rest of his game, he's going to be unstoppable. Francois, and the receiver was pushed out of bounds. Ball was thrown out of bounds as well. Terry hobbling a bit. Terry's ball skills, Greg, are just so exceptional, especially along the sideline where you got to have awareness of where you are, but you still got to time the jump in contested matchups. He's so gifted in that area. Yeah, he's just scratching the surface. I mean, he is going to be so special for a very long time here in Tallahassee. Really looking forward to seeing him develop over the next few seasons. Meanwhile, only the fourth play run by Florida State in Gator territory today. It's another pass play. Francois looking deep again, and he overthrows the receiver, Matthews. It's two plays in a row now where they're looking downfield. I mean, <laughs> we just said at the start of this try, hey, you don't have to get it all back right now. You can still run your offense, but that's three throws downfield in a row, clearly. Francois sees something he likes. 
far as his receivers getting vertical, but now here he is again. An obvious passing situation. With those stud defensive ends coming off the edge. Plus, you don't know about Terry. He was hobbling a couple of the plays ago. Here comes Polite, and it's an easy sack as he beat the right tackle. And it's a loss of about five. And look at the two-point stance. I mean, you just see Ja'Kai Polite, two-point stance. Look at the jump he gets. Boom. I mean, like he shot out of a cannon. No chance for Brady Scott, the right tackle. He barely even touches him. When Ja'Kai Polite jumps the snap, you got no chance. Right there, very evident. As now they're back yet again in an obvious passing situation. Let's see what Polite has in store on fourth and long. Second sack of the day for him fourth sack by Florida fourth and 13 Francois steps up and he beats his man takes it inside the 20 getting the first down inside the five to the four DeAndre Francois keeps hope alive for the Knowles a 32 yard run what a beautiful job by DeAndre Francois he sees man coverage with a spy Voshan Joseph has him he makes a miss and has a lot of room as a result, really nice job by the quarterback, recognizing where the vulnerabilities were in the defense and using his legs to pick up a critical fourth down conversion. So first and goal from the four. The reason for the stop is Chauncey Gardner Johnson lost his helmet, was having a conversation with the official. Everybody has had an opportunity to catch their breath. Francois will keep it. He'll score. Touchdown, FSU. Tremendous answer by this Florida State offense. They put the ball on the ground. And Florida extends their lead to 20. Florida State gets the ball back. Things are looking very bleak. And their quarterback responds. Tremendous drive by the Seminoles. You remember Francois had that run on third down and 10 that kept a drive alive in the first half that ended up being a touchdown. He drive on fourth and 13 with his feet and then he pays it off running the ball into the end zone and now it's 27 14. DeAndre Francois he did it on fourth and long with his legs he does it again in the red zone and gets the Seminoles within striking distance here in Tallahassee in the second half to get Florida State back within 13 points 32 yard run was longest of the season three carries on that drive alone for 45 yards and a touchdown Logan Tyler, the kickoff man. Another touchback. Really nice design on that last touchdown run by Francois. Just a quarterback counter. You see motion going this way, and then you see these the tackle and the guard loop around to the other side. That creates a walk-in opportunity for DeAndre Francois. And Tom, they're going to need to adjust up front because DeAndre Francois's legs are now a factor. Yeah, there, there's no question. And Dan Bowen not pleased with the up the field wide loop of the defensive end, polite Zuniga 92, because it's allowing the front door to be open for DeAndre Francois to just step up and take off and run. So they've got to adjust their pass rush length to the level of the quarterback. Franks will throw it out to P. Ryan on first down. And past the 30. So a gain of six or seven on first down as they get the backs involved in the passing game. This is something that I think Dan Mullen does as well as anybody. Just get drive started. The first play of the drive, he always seems to figure out a way to create positive yardage. Whether it be with a run play to the perimeter, an easy pass, he gets the drive started so you have some momentum. And now P. Ryan will run it here and they get the first down out near the 40-yard line. Nine yards on that pickup for the Michael P. Ryan, who's got 113 rushing yards on the day. You have to think that right side of the Florida offensive line, they're going to be 
the side that they run behind. As the game goes on, those big bodies, Fred Johnson and Juwan Taylor, really lean on you. Frank's off play action, looking downfield, and trouble gets sacked at the 35-yard line. Jaden would be the true freshman there for the Seminoles. A loss of five. And a nice job by Woodby. You're going to see him engage with P. Ryan off of play action. And he recognizes, converts run to pass, and drags down Franks for the sack. Woodby has been a real bright spot over the last few drives, making a key third down stop in the sack right there. So now second and long for Florida. The crowd back into it. They're going to run P. Ryan. Nice move. Breaks a tackle at the 45. Another one and gets a first down. LaMichael P. Ryan, a guy that the Florida State defense cannot get to the ground. 15 more yards. What an unbelievable run. It doesn't look like much is there. It's a nice cutback. But how about him just running through would-be tacklers? These running backs for Florida are so, so strong. This time they bottle up P. Ryan. Marvin Wilson downs him after a gain of one. Nearing two minutes to go here in the third quarter. This Florida team won four games all of last year. So at eight wins right now, it's the third best improvement in FBS behind Georgia Southern, which has won six more games than a year ago. And Cincinnati and what Luke Fickle's been able to do with the Bearcats, they've won five more games than a year ago. And a win for Florida today, a likely New Year's six bowl appearance in Dan Mullen's first season. Scarlett on second and nine. And the defensive line for Florida State wins that battle, allowing Warner and Woodby to step in there defensively from their linebacker position. Really interesting to see what Dan Mullen dials up right here on third and long. We've seen him do a little bit of everything so far. Looking like he's going to give them an empty formation, which makes me think they might count how many defenders are in the box and Felipe Franks has been pretty effective with his legs today. Let's see if they look at potentially going with a quarterback run maybe to the left hand side where they might have some numbers and some leverage. Four man rush Franks to Tony. What a catch in between two defenders and he took a pretty good shot from Jackson hangs on for a 14 yard gain. It's a really nice job by Tony knowing how many yards he had to get knowing where there is a hole in the zone defensively and finding that little space right in the middle of the defense to settle up to allow Franks to throw him an accurate pass over the middle a nice throw too by Franks on time any later that ball could have been tipped up and deflected pretty easily Felipe Franks has been very solid again he's protected the ball today he's got two touchdown passes. Florida State almost jumped into the neutral zone. There is a penalty flag down. Movement by the Gators. False start. Number 73. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, I think it's interesting with what happened at Mullen's former school, Mississippi State, and the job that Joe Moorhead did this year, helping Nick Fitzgerald turn things around after a rough patch in the middle of the season. You see the same thing with Dan Mullen and Felipe Franks. Yeah, they've grown a lot together. The last couple of weeks and Felipe Franks so much about playing quarterbacks being confident and Felipe Franks he's had some ups and downs but man he's hung in there in the last seven quarters he's been rock solid and his team program. has a 13 point lead through three quarters back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Boy, if Ohio State wins that one, can't wait to see what the college football playoff rankings look like on Tuesday. Wide open Jefferson, the easiest touchdown of his life. 38 yards as he got behind three defenders by about 15 yards. And where do you see the move, guys? Unbelievable route. He murked him, Greg. That was unbelievable. 
It's not often when you see a secondary defender fall down because of a route. And no contact. That was a special inside move by Jefferson. And the third touchdown pass of the day by Felipe Franks. And it's back to a 20 point game. Watch this move by Jefferson. Uh, it's just a vertical release. He has one on one, but watch him just subtly move to the inside and then break it back out. And look how patient he is with this route. Boom. I mean, that right there is just so difficult to defend. I mean, he climbs, and the defender, Nasrul Dean, is standing there trying to catch him at about 12 yards. He takes the cheese on the inside route and can't recover. It's a beautiful play by the Ole Miss transfer. He thinks he's running a bang eight. I mean, it, it's just it's so hard yeah. to cover that when you don't have any reroute underneath. And he's one on one isolation with a full head of steam. I don't know how you don't. I don't know how you keep your feet on a move like that. <laughs> I don't I mean, either. It's just such a patient route and nice protection up front by the Gator offensive line. Did you guys think going into the year that the Florida receiving core would be this productive? I, I didn't. I, I thought they'd be improved. But I, I didn't anticipate this level of improvement. There's still a lot of room to grow, too. There's some talent in that receiver group for the Gators. Jefferson now has six receiving touchdowns on the season. This will come out to the 25 on the touchback. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. With Florida leading by 20, Felipe Franks, we talked about the numbers. Three touchdown passes to three different receivers. We've also talked about the penalties, and the biggest one probably, the unsportsmanlike conduct after Florida State had stopped Florida in the red zone, and it was going to be a field goal attempt for the Gators. And again, for Florida State to get bowl eligible and extend their streak, which is the best in the history of college football, 37 consecutive if they can come back and win. They also have a winning record in 41 straight years going back to 1977. Here's Murray on the catch. He's short and it'll be second down and about a yard. Florida if it wins you would think a New Year's Six Bowl for the Gators. After a four win season a year ago. Matthews gets the jet sweep carry and a first down past the 40 yard line. Greg you talk about that New Year's six and Dave the possibility for Florida. I remember coming off of the Georgia game and the Missouri game two disappointing losses. Dan Mullen had to remind his team hey we got a lot to play for here a potential New Year's six potential 10 win season. I think his team needed to be reminded of that. And to your point Tom they also then had the deficit against South Carolina Terry wide open. How do you lose him. Samarian so Terry may be the most dangerous weapon on this Florida State team down the field, and he gets 31 yards. Yeah, nice job right here. Look at the pump fake. Boom. They fake the screen underneath, and Terry, his big body, just working up the sideline. A lot of space. Nice sell. Akers. Good open field stop by David Reese. Gain of three. I think sometimes now back to what Tom was talking about though we've become so accustomed to focusing on the playoff where some of the other bowls have gotten affected watered down. And when you're at Florida State or Florida it's championship expectations and if you don't have a chance to win a championship. Sometimes you view that season as a disappointment but it's not. I mean, obviously going to a bowl game for Florida State is significant especially everything they experienced last year. In the formation. Florida getting the New York Six is huge. Over four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Ten penalty on Florida State. Well when you're trying to get a program like Florida that is used to being in the championship hunt back to that level and that's the reason you hired Dan Mullen. I don't know that going into the year a lot of people around the program thought that they could elevate from four wins to a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah, they've definitely done a great job. Some big wins some disappointing get outcomes obviously Missouri comes to mind but really big wins this year for them. Akers it's only a couple going to be third and long. You have the win at Mississippi State. You have the win over LSU. And. He's the, the first. Only first year head coach to beat a top 10 team this year and one of three first year head coaches. With a ranked team and they're number 11 in the poll. 
There's some contact downfield by Chauncey Gardner on the pass intended for Matthews, but it's fourth down and nine in Florida State. You would think would go for it at this point of the game, down 20. Yeah, no doubt. And if I'm DeAndre Francois, I'm, I'm looking in the direction of my big play receiver. I'm looking at Tamarian Terry. He's a matchup nightmare. Looks like they're going to move him into the slot on the left. Big number 15. Let's see if he looks his direction on a critical fourth down. Francois intercepted by Trey Dean. And Dean knocked out of bounds near midfield. A 42 yard return. So the Gators take over early fourth quarter in command of this football game after the true freshman Dean gets his first pick of the year. Jawing with the Florida State sideline, telling the fans they can go home. It's a heck of a group right there, man. That defensive front's off the charts. He's being impolite, though, to the Florida State fans, don't you think? Here's a Pierce <laughs> on the run, and he gets a first down to the 36. He's got five forced fumbles on the year. And it's not like he was a no-name coming into the year, but with all the great defensive linemen in college football, he wasn't at the top of the list that people were talking about. There's an injured Florida State defensive player. It's Corey Durden shaking up. Kai Polite, according to Todd McShay, the number 23 overall prospect. If he decides to come out, he's a junior from Daytona Beach. And he has been a one man wrecking crew at times this year for the Gators. Off the edge. How about Franks taking a deep shot here with a 20 point lead on first down? Ja'Kai Polite's been unblockable today, especially going around the edge. Here he is working against Derek Kelly right around. Strip sack of DeAndre Francois as he extends his arms. And then on the other side, how about the get off? My goodness, forget about it. No chance for Brady Scott as he tries to get out of his stance. Ja'Kai Polite has really burst onto the scene. Largely overlooked and overshadowed by some of those defenders over the last few years. But man, has he broke out in a big way this year. And is saving what might be his best performance for today against his rival. And not afraid to have some fun there on the, on the Florida sideline get back to the ground here Damian Pierce you know how much of, of his improvement goes to you know the quality defensive coaching staff uh, that they have in Florida with Todd Grantham as uh, the coordinator well oh, they're great I mean it, a lot of it goes to the other two guys too, Jabari Zaniga and CeCe Jefferson he gets a lot of one on ones because you can't pay too much attention to Ja'Kai Polite but Todd Grantham does a really good job moving him around and creating isolations and when he's in a one on one situation an obvious passing down. He's a handful. It's been so fun to watch this defense get after quarterbacks on a weekly basis. Now it's Florida State's opportunity to get after the quarterback here on third down and nine. Franks open his grinds a first down and more inside the 15 yard line. Knocked down by Kyle Myers but it's a 20 yard pickup. Another strong throw by Felipe Franks and great protection up front. He has all day against some twists and some movement. He stands in there and works the middle of the field. Tell you what man he's starting to develop a rapport with Grimes big body wide receiver with loads of potential. And he's had an outstanding day today up near 120 yards. Kadarius Tony in to run the Wildcat here inside the red zone. And Tony is down to about the 10. 
going to make uh, the way Felipe Franks has played going to make Dan Mullen's decision next year who the quarterback is difficult because if you know they win this game and win their bowl game it's a 10 win season yeah guy hasn't turned the ball over he's got 23 touchdown six picks Emory Jones is, is waiting in the wings but they're going to compete I mean, there's nothing's been decided when you're building a program and you're establishing the foundation I mean, don't get me wrong he'll take the first snap of spring but still a long way to the finish line here stacked up Jones is a true freshman and has played in three games they want to preserve that red shirt especially with the way uh, Franks is going but but Dave think about what you just outlined isn't that what the the Florida fan base has been thirsting for yeah Le for a team that's got a pretty good nucleus could win 10 games and now you're trying to figure out who your quarterback's going to be having a guy that won 10 games for I mean that's what this Florida fan base wants yeah iron sharpens iron I mean I, I'm one of those guys man have five guys at the quarterback position that all can play that's going to make every single one of them better Franks keeps it here on third down and five and will not get the first down it's going to be fourth and a yard and a little extracurricular activity haven't had a lot of that today. Now you're talking about Felipe, Felipe Franks, guys, and, and Greg, I, I think, you know, this is our fourth contest with them this year. This is the best he's looked throwing the football to intermediate and deep areas of the field all year long. And from start to finish, there's been pockets of success, but consistent today. Franks on fourth down, the pass is batted down, incomplete. DeKalen Brooks, Derek Brooks' son. Gets the pass deflection and a turnover on down. Yeah, and you're just going to see him coming off the edge right here. And nobody accounts for Brooks, and he goes vertical and slaps down the pass. That's one Felipe Franks would love to have back. He had a guy open in the flats and just couldn't negotiate a throwing lane for himself. Nice play, though, by the freshman. Florida State down 20, 9.22 on the clock, takes over on its seven yard line. They don't have enough guys on the field. This is what we have seen all oh day long. You're they right. can't line up. They're playing with 10 people right now on offense. On a change of possession. Francois from his goal line, deep ball, and a double coverage for Terry, underthrown, incomplete. It's frustrating, man. I mean, you watch Florida State and you see talent. You, you see potential. But what you don't see is disciplined play, solid communication, cohesiveness along the offensive line. I mean, they're a mess at times. And honestly, the, the worst thing you can be as a team or as a player is an underachieving group or an underachieving guy. And they have a bunch of them on this team. It's really frustrating at times to watch. Francois in trouble. And sacked at the three-yard line. Kerry Clark with the takedown. Third and long now for FSU. And you just look at some of the things they've dealt with. No consistency on first and second down. Constantly playing behind the sticks against a really good pass rushing group a bunch of penalties which even push you further behind the sticks and some turnovers that led to big plays and touchdowns for the Gators on the other side. Can they get seven or eight yards on third down here to bring up fourth and short pass underneath Matthews and runs out of play picking up now well, maybe three or four. And Florida State just going to punt fourth and ten. Yeah, but they got to figure something out, though. And, and look, it's early, and, and Willie Taggart's going to have some time. But he needs to evaluate the staff. I mean, which groups did he feel like did a good enough job this year? And he needs to evaluate his coaches, challenge his coaches. He needs to go obviously on the recruiting trail and do a really good job because they got to get deeper, they got to get stronger, they got to get organized. They just set ten guys on the field for the punt again. He just ran an 11th man on at the last second. And that's not about talent. That's about a lack of focus. Ball is muffed, but it was out of bounds anyway. Florida going to take over in Florida State territory when we come back.
some of the guys I played with in college and in the NFL. I mean, most of the best players I played with were from the state of Florida. I mean, just unbelievable skill in this state. And a game like this can go a long way in, in helping you get the inside track. Well, and some Greg, of those recruits. yeah, and when, when you consider, you know, the big three in the state of Florida, there's so much focus down in the Dade and Broward County and South Florida. And sometimes it just takes a few guys. And when you look at this Florida State team, Dalvin Cook, South Florida, Kelvin Benjamin, South Florida, LaMarcus Joyner, South Florida. So you get a handful of them coupled with the rest of the state. It can really impact your program when you can steal some from the University of Miami. What? Down. What's it going to take us for Florida State to get back? Because let's not forget, I know DeAndre Francois missed last year and he had James Blackman, a true freshman, playing quarterback, but they still lost six games last year. So it's not like Willie Taggart took over a perfect situation. Uh, first down and more for Scarlett inside the 25. What's it going to take for Florida State to get back to where it was when James Winston was here and they were winning a championship and competing for others? First and foremost, they got to get good along the offensive line. I mean, you are never going to be a consistent football program if you can't block guys. And their offensive line for the last three or four years has been absolutely brutally inconsistent, and particularly on the perimeter. So they got to get better along the offensive line. And I think a lot of it just has to do with just being more consistent on defense in creating turnovers and, and using that athleticism that you have at all 11 positions to your advantage. They just are not very consistent on defense and their offensive line has been atrocious for the better part of the last decade. Scarlett drags a defender. Close to another first down, gain of nine. It's all about the front on both sides of the ball. I mean, you look at the common denominator in college football amongst the elite teams. It, you start from the inside and you work your way out. And I, I think the other thing, too, for Florida State, they're truly going to commit to the up-tempo, fast-paced offense, and they're going to be a true spread team like they are. Then they're probably going to have to have a little bit of a change in philosophy about what type of quarterback they recruit in the sense of, having a runner, having a designated guy that can be a part of your run game each and every down. Right now, that's not necessarily what they have on their depth chart. Franks, pass may have been tipped. It's caught by Swain and a first down. Another thing too, Tom, uh, when Willie Taggart goes out and hits the recruiting trail, he needs to identify intangible qualities in the guys that he's bringing to campus. I mean, he's got to find some guys that have won championships in high school and that refuse to lose. And when things are getting bad, they grab the rest of the team and they pull them along with them and they say, hey, you know what? We're not going in the tank. And, and Willie Taggart is such a good recruiter and he's going to get a lot of talent and skill here to Tallahassee. But you got to identify some intangible qualities within those individuals, too, at some point if you want this team to go from good to great and from great to elite. Scarlett inside the 10. It sounds like from what you're saying that you're, you're not seeing the fight in the heart today from the Florida State players that, that you need to in a game like this when you're trying to get bowl eligible and keep an incredible streak going. Yeah, and last year too. I mean, as soon as things went started to go sideways, they went sideways. And no one really had any level of accountability. This year's a little different. I mean, last week's performance was nice. I mean, they won the game. That was a ranked opponent against Boston College. And a lot of people thought that that was a game they didn't have a chance of winning. They do. And they played hard here for a little bit today. And they bounced back a couple times. They were just not as good as the Florida Gators on the opposite side. But you know, I want to see some real leadership really start to come to the forefront for this Florida State team. Some guys that really refuse to lose. Scarlett to the end zone. Touchdown. Exclamation point on a Gator win. And probably a New Year's Six bowl game. It was 13 to 7 at halftime. <laughs> As uh, Celebrate with your teammates. That's, that's well within the rules. Fred Johnson carrying Jordan Scarlett. Yeah, Fred Johnson more than capable of carrying the load. 330 pounds senior. I don't know if that's a little dig at, at Renegade on the other uh, side. Because <laughs> Renegade takes us to personally, man. Don't mess with him. <laughs> don't mess with the Gators either, though. 41-14, they're rolling.
all playoff. How about Michigan? The most points given up under Jim Harbaugh, according to a couple of tweets I saw that Ohio State scored 48 in that game. Florida's got 41 here today on Florida State. In large part due to the way things went in the third quarter. This game was 13-7 at this point. They get Samuels for throwing a punch. A couple plays later, Hammond finds himself walking into the end zone. And then the strip sack of DeAndre Francois caused by Ja'Kai Polite. Felipe Franks scrambling around, finding Grimes on the scramble drill for the touchdown. The third quarter was the undoing for Florida State. They hung in there the first 30 minutes. And just haven't really been able to muster much of anything on either side of the football here in the second half. And here they go with another substitution error. 11th guy walking onto the field after a change of possession. Yeah, man. It's unreal. Francois over the middle. Caught by McKitty and Drag down at the 30 yard line. Take a look at this lineup on ABC next Saturday. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, Texas, Oklahoma. This is why you have a conference championship game. You get a rematch. Texas beat Oklahoma earlier this season. American Conference Championship. How will UCF fare without its star quarterback taking on Memphis? And then you have the ACC Championship game at night. First down run here by Patrick out to the 43. Greg, I want to get back to something you were talking about in terms of Florida State's recruiting going forward, and you talked about the recruitment of intangible factors. It's my belief over the last 13 years of being involved in this side of it that that starts with asking one simple question. Does the player love football? Because lots of players like getting recruited. Lots of players like to wear a Florida State uniform. But not everybody loves football. And that's what Florida State's got to find out about the guys they're recruiting. Donovan Steiner with an interception. And Florida three minutes and two seconds away for making this official. That's a good point, Tom, on Florida State. Let's get back to what we were talking about the games next week. Of those three games we show you, which is the most intriguing? Normally, the, the one yeah. you wouldn't say is UCF Memphis, but it but becomes it is intriguing now, that, Right, yeah. because of Mackenzie Milton and knowing that a New Year's Six bowl bid is up for grabs. If UCF doesn't win the American, they fall short to a team that they beat by only one earlier this season. Then it could be Boise or Utah State that maybe gets into the New Year's Six. Those teams play tonight on ESPN so that's a fascinating matchup the Big 12 game is the one for me though I just look at these two teams Texas and Oklahoma have had moments where they've looked really good and the moments where you're left kind of shaking your head uh, Oklahoma the only time you shake your head is when their defense is on the field because their offense can flat out light up the scoreboard will they be able to get revenge on the one team that beat them this year Nick Sproles a walk on is in to finish out this game at quarterback he hands off for Damian Pierce short gain. So notable conference championship games. You got Utah Washington in the Pac-12 with Washington State out. The Pac-12 is out. You would think if Texas beats Oklahoma the Big 12 is out right. If Ohio State hangs on you would have to think they control their own destiny. The Alabama Georgia game and then what happens if Pitt should upset Clemson the Tigers get knocked out if they win the night against South Carolina. I think it's going to be a one loss team. It's going to be a tall order to knock off Clemson with that rushing attack. It's a little bit too one dimensional for me to think. But the one game that I'm intrigued by, oh man, I, I think Northwestern can hang with whoever comes out of the Big Ten East. If it's Michigan, they had them down 17 points earlier in the game. And Ohio State has been as inconsistent as anybody in college football on the defensive side. And Northwestern has an NFL quarterback in Clayton Thorson. So that's a fascinating game too in the Big Ten Championship. Look at the numbers for Felipe Franks three touchdown passes almost 300 yards of total offense and another win. Going to be nine and three after a four win season a year ago Sproles on third down and eight and it's incomplete and Florida will have to punt the ball. And a lot of things to be intrigued by next week on championship Saturday Tom. Listen, I, I, when you look at the, the Big Ten, and you just mentioned it with Ohio State, the way Northwestern plays and without knowing how Ohio State would show up, that has tremendous intrigue uh, for me. And then I think we're going to find out a lot about UCF because, you know, one of the knocks about the group of five is that if you have a significant injury or an injury to the wrong person, it's maybe more difficult to bounce back. 
And the injury is an issue in terms of the group of five team uh, making a New Year's Six Bowl, not the college football play. That not happening, even though they were ranked ninth. Even if Milton wouldn't have gotten hurt and they would have won their games, they're not going to make the college football playoff. Tonight, nope. after Utah State and Boise State on ESPN, check out Sports Center Michael Leaves and Kevin Connors. Reactions from Michigan, Ohio State. What happened to the Iron Bowl? Heather Dinich breaks down all the college football playoff scenarios. You can catch it on the ESPN app as well. I love rivalry week. I just I just love it. I'm just the games are so intriguing. You get one chance as a player to knock off your rival. So I'll be tuned into that sports center. I can assure you and you look at the emotion on the Florida State sideline. I know they've got to be disappointed. It's like big number 90 Demarcus Christmas. He's had a heck of a career here in Tallahassee. Well and, and not just for Christmas but a lot of the other seniors as uh, McKitty makes the catch. Or excuse me, uh, Patrick. You think about early in their career, they're they're like, wow, this is we're rolling. Yeah, in contention for championships in the ACC and nationally. And then the last two years, six losses last year, and now seven losses this year. It'll be the first time since 1976, Bobby Bowden's first year as the head coach at Florida State, that the Knolls will finish with fewer than six wins. Incomplete. 59 seconds to go. It's also going to end a bowl streak of 36 consecutive years, which was the longest in the history of college football. The next longest was Virginia Tech, but it worked, uh, 25. It worked out okay for Bobby Bowden, though. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out fine for him. Let's hope for Florida State that Willie Taggart can get this thing going. Uh, it, all it takes is really one recruiting class to kind of turn things around. And then once you get a little momentum, you can start to build on that and it's going to be tough to do so in the immediate with the expectations that you have at Florida State but he's done it everywhere else he's been let's hope that Willie Taggart can do it for Seminole fans all over the country and Florida State just runs the ball here so it's going to be fourth down Seminoles uh, did have that win last week against Boston College and maybe Willie Taggart can point to that and say look this is what we're capable of. We, we did it that day against the ranked team because there's so many other games that he probably just wants to burn the film on. Yeah. Look at a nice long off season though to evaluate. I mean they're going to need to evaluate everyone they have all the coaches they need yep. to do things differently next year in a lot of ways. There's going to be some exit interviews next week that aren't going to be too friendly. On fourth down, it's a first down. Patrick picks it up. We'll see if uh, on the ready for play, Florida State even snaps the ball. Florida's already running to their fans, and this is over. And so is the season for Florida State. For the first time in four decades, the Knolls are not going bowling. Meanwhile, the Gators are headed 